What's going on Decepticon fam? Welcome back to my channel, your spot for DJ mixes and gaming. I have been away for a minute, but I do have a couple of mixes coming up pretty soon, including two synthwave mixes. One is a chill wave mix and the other is a cyberpunk mix. If you are into my mixes and other subgenres that you want us to do while you're studying, driving, gaming, whatever, head on over to the playlist section to find out more. And also, if you do have questions on all of the mods that we do here on this channel, then head on over to our Discord. I will leave the link to that in the description below. Today, I'm going to be going over a project that I've been working on for about a year now, and that is my Arcade One Up Partycade, and it's a custom Bit Trip Runner mod that I did. And I chose this for many reasons. Um, Bit Trip Runner is a new retro game, probably one of the first new retro games that I played. It came out back in 2010 on the Wii as a WiiWare title, and the way that it looked and felt was a perfect balance of old school and new, and it kind of stuck with me throughout the last couple of years. And being that I already have a couple other arcade one-ups that I've modded, this one was supposed to fit another type of subgenre, which is the new retro video games. That have been coming out so like um ninja turtles shredder's revenge streets of rage 4 obviously bit trip runner and there is another bit trip game that i have on here bit trip void and all of those types of games i felt would be represented perfectly on this cabinet the partycade is meant to either be sitting on a countertop like i have right here temporarily just because i haven't wall mounted it yet but it should be placed on a wall mount, at least that's what I think looks best. This is really space saving and it fits well in my small place because I don't really have enough space to get more arcade one-ups at their standard size. So I thought this would be a good option. The way that it looks fits the types of games that play because like I said, it has a very retro look, but at the same time, it's also modern. And the Bit Trip Runner artwork was very plain and simple. I pulled a lot of the aesthetic ideas from Mrs. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, and Dig Dug. I think those are the three that I kept looking back at to get inspiration from. And I wanted to nail that early 80s vibe, but also bring in the current generation of new retro, obviously, and all of the quality of life elements that we have with gaming and I feel like this was just a perfect fit all around. I got all of the custom artwork done with Arcade Mod Up and I've actually used them on a previous cab that I did in the past for my custom Tron cab and those graphics came out amazing. The Light Up Marquee I got from Arcade Game Factory and they did an amazing job with it. The, um, the light is extremely bright and the colors are not washed out and there's not really a lot of color or I should say a lot of light that bleeds through however on the bottom you can't see just a little bit but that's something that I think I can fix up with maybe some um, black electrical tape or something like that. I did want to make this look like um, something that you would see in the 80s like something very genuine so the control panel somewhat resembles a cross of Mrs. Pac-Man and Donkey Kong so I got these little arrows for the joystick I got that idea from Mrs. Pac-Man. Um, it's something that was pretty common back in the days on those early 80s arcade cabinets. Now, obviously the arcade cabs back then only had a couple buttons and being that this houses a lot of the newer retro games, a lot of the games do require more than just two buttons. As a matter of fact, some of them require all eight buttons. But to make it easy, um, Bit Trip Runner only really uses two buttons so I just label them jump and kick um, and that's basically all you need to know and those actually are mapped for the majority of the games that have like a jump and an action button so it's it's pretty intuitive like once you get into a game those two buttons work for the majority of the games now this part of the of the control panel I actually created on my own and I got this idea from the Donkey Kong cat because they have a little section that explains what the game is and I basically, I basically did the same thing with Bit Trip Runner and had these little icons down at the bottom explaining the player like you and the uh, items that you can collect. 
My favorite part on the control panel is the waterfall design that I did. The, the piece of wood that I got to replace the existing piece, um, which this originally was an Asteroids cab by the way, um, I had to get a new piece. I, I went to Home Depot and I had them cut a piece of MDF, but this was actually a, a wall molding and it had this curved edge, like a beveled edge. And I thought it worked out perfectly because it's comfortable on my hands. And second, it really helped me to kind of create that waterfall effect that a lot of the arcade games back in the 80s had on their cabinets. And I just felt like it was a design element that I wanted to include and it ended up, it ended up coming out perfectly. One other thing that I did was I, when creating the buttons and the layout of this, I wanted to push everything up on this panel so that you'd have space or that I'd have space or anybody that plays this would have like an area to kind of rest their arms and their wrists because I saw the Street Fighter version of the Party Cade and it looked like the buttons were set a little further down. But with this, I wanted to make sure that it felt as comfortable as possible. So again, I just moved everything up. And when you place your hands on here, it feels very comfortable. And um, my wrists have not gotten sore at all. Now for the back, just want to show you guys real quick. Um, there is the, the monitor converter, um, the power adapters, one for the converter, the other for the amp. Um, this does have an amp. I followed the same tutorial that ETA Prime created a few years back when the arcade mops first came out. I just followed those steps and was able to make everything fit inside of this. This arcade one-up mod is running off of something different. My other two are running off of Raspberry Pis, but this is running off of a Lenovo. And um, it's a Lenovo M93P to be exact. And it's a little mini PC that is basically used for um, smaller office equipment or like smaller offices that don't re require a lot of power but I also got this idea from ETA Prime and it works better than what I thought it would for retro gaming. It handles all of the PC games like Shredder's Revenge, Streets of Rage 4, um, and all of those other 2D indie games very well. I have no problems at all. So this thing is a little beast and I would recommend getting that. I will leave the link to that information down below too. The BitTrip Runner mod is something that I wanted to fit in as its own category because I do have the two other arcade one-ups that have their own type of category and I want each one to feel different. I want each one to have its own purpose. So my first cabinet that I got was the Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition and this has all of the 80s and 90s fighting, shooting, shoot 'em ups, um, all of those games, it has them on there. And my Tron Arcade uh, One Up that I customized. This one I did during the pandemic before before Arcade One Up came out with the their own version of Tron. But I do like this version because it does fit in my area pretty good. And I think that the Arcade One Up version that they came out with is bigger. So um, I'm pretty pleased with this still. And um, this game basically is meant for anything that uses a flight stick and the spinner. Which brings me back to the Bit Trip Runner Arcade 1UP Partycade. I feel like this game deserved to be in an arcade cabinet. It just feels natural. When I used to play it on the Wii, I used to have a Wiimote and play it sideways and it felt okay, but I felt like it didn't do it justice. So playing this on a cabinet with the arcade sticks it just feels perfect and it's meant to be. So let's go ahead and see some gameplay and um, I'll show you guys exactly how it all runs. Thank <laughs> you. 
we're gonna go ahead and try Big Trip Core. This game is a lot harder in my opinion than Big Trip Runner. But this game also looks really good with this whole arcade um, one up custom setup that I did. And it's just another game that looks like very 80s, like um, early 80s arcade game style and just fit well with the arcade joystick setup and I just thought that this game needed justice as far as like this type of control scheme because playing this with the Wiimote, how I used to originally play it on my Wii, it just, it just doesn't feel right. So playing it this way, I feel like it really does the game justice and just aesthetically, you're gonna see that this just looks amazing on this type of setup. I feel like all of the original Bit Trip games that first came out really nailed that new retro vibe as far as like playing games off of like those old school Atari systems or Coleco and with a new vibe though. Like you can tell it's new, but um, it's definitely a lot more complicated than what games were back then. Such a crazy rhythm game. The whole setup of this runs on Big Box, which is a premium version of the Launch Box. And that allowed me to set up the whole system somewhat like what Emulation Station is, where you have a whole list of games and then it has the videos playing while you scroll through each game. But I want it to look somewhat simple because this is a lower end mini PC. I didn't want to have a bunch of graphics in the background and all these crazy videos. I just wanted to have the list of the games and have the videos pop up for each game. I'm just scrolling through each of the games that I have here and I have about 20 games. I didn't want to overload this because I felt like if I had a lot of games like on my Street Fighter cap, it just becomes overwhelming. And I think that these new retro games are a lot more in depth. They're a lot deeper than what those classic games are. So I'm just going to keep scrolling through the games just to show you. Um, but I'm going to do a video later on just to kind of go over each of these games a little bit more. I was really picky on the 20 games that I chose and there were like specific reasons for majority of them. Burger Time, this was another game that I had on WiiWare, and I just felt like it was a really good new representation of an old game. Same with uh, Hyper Frogger Edition. But like I said, I'm going to go through this in the future in another video, and that way you guys can see in um, more detail what games I actually, actually chose. And I know a lot of you out there are thinking, well, this is kind of stupid. Why would you have Ninja Turtles? Why would you have Streets of Rage on here when it's only a one-player cabinet? Well actually have a solution. I could just plug in a Bluetooth controller like this um, $11 generic controller that I got from Micro Center and um, just have a second player hop in. And yeah, this was 11 bucks brand new. Well, it was open box. The only thing that was wrong with it was that the instruction manual was torn up. But I mean, I didn't need the instruction manual. Literally, you just plug in the, the Bluetooth adapter to the mini PC and it's all good to go. But I think regular price that controller is 14 bucks, but it works out great. Okay, so there's the first player obviously with the arcade stick. And we're gonna go ahead and press 
the power button on here. And there we go. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Sorry if it's a little bit shaky. I have my, uh, <laughs> my camera obviously, or my phone obviously off of the tripod, but there you go. Somebody wants to jump in, no problem at all. All right, so with Leo, obviously, just pushing buttons. And with the second player, no problem. So I know a lot of you were probably thinking, well, these are kind of stupid. Um, these party kids are dumb if you want to have multiplayer because you can't. But um, Arcade 1UP did do it with their Street Fighter version. You just have to plug in a USB controller. And obviously the mini PC that I'm using here, um, same type of thing. So just wanted to um, point that out because it's definitely a great little addition that honestly didn't cost a lot of money. So this is the original Asteroids CAD that it used to be um, before I added all of the artwork onto it. Just wanted to give you guys a quick glimpse of what this somewhat used to look like before I did the entire mod. Alright everybody, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the showcase. If you have any questions, feel free to hit up our Discord or leave them down in the comments below. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.